what's up my chemistry people? What in the heck are we gonna do in this video? We are going to explain the process of chemical equilibrium as a dynamic, dynamic, reversible state in which rates of opposing processes are equal. As always, breaking it down. First thing we're gonna do, define, interpret, and calculate the reaction quotient represented by the letter Q, capital Q, uppercase. And then numero dos, we're going to explain what a reaction quotient represented by that capital letter Q greater than, less than, or equal to the equilibrium constant represented by that capital letter K means. All right, so first, what the heck is a reaction quotient? And the reaction quotient is just a measure of the proportions of the products to reactants at any point not necessarily equilibrium in a chemical reaction. Oftentimes though, we're looking at initial concentrations or initial conditions for a given reaction. So many times when we're talking about reaction quotient, we're talking about initial concentrations, but really can measure any point in the reaction. Could be equilibrium, could not be. So let's take a look at a sample equation and talk about how we define the reaction quotient. It should look pretty similar to the equilibrium constant K. In fact, it's defined the exact same way. So as you look at this general reaction that is given to you on your screen and in your notes, the reaction quotient is defined as a ratio of the product concentrations over the reacting concentrations. Notice again, those concentrations are raised to coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. So defined the same way, we're just not necessarily at equilibrium. All right, so often what we're gonna do then is we're gonna be given some concentrations and we're gonna ask ourselves, are we at equilibrium or are we not? And if we're not, then what's gonna happen in order for us to establish equilibrium? So the next couple of slides, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be comparing that equilibrium constant K to the reaction quotient Q. And there's a really neat trick that will help you out as long as you always compare the equilibrium constant K to the reaction quotient Q in alphabetical order. So when you're doing the comparison, always write K first and then Q. Okay, so first scenario. If K is less than Q, the system is not at equilibrium and reactant formation is favored. Now, take a moment to look at this generalized reaction that we have on your screen. Our reactants A represented by these little blue dots, our products B represented by these little red dots. And let me give you some sample data in which, in which K is less than Q. For this generalized reaction, the equilibrium constant is 1.45. We're trying to identify what happens when K is less than Q. So I've set up here on the right a Q value, a Q value that's greater than K. What that means is at the moment that we measured our concentrations, we had a larger amount of product than reactant than there is at equilibrium. Boom, K is less than Q. So in order for the conditions in which we're provided to achieve equilibrium, the reaction is going to shift to the left. In other words, follow that little less than sign, it's gonna shift over to the left and form more reactant. Our product concentrations will decrease, our reactant concentrations will increase until we reach equilibrium. Okay, so now let's think about what happens when K is greater than Q. Once again, we're not at equilibrium, but this time product formation is favored. Let's go back to that generalized equation and think about why. Again, we're talking about the same equation at the same temperature, so our equilibrium constant is still 1.45. But now we wanna think about what's gonna happen when our Q value is less than our K value. In other words, at the moment that we're measuring the concentrations, there's a much larger concentration of reactant than there is product compared to those concentrations at equilibrium. So K is greater than Q. What's gonna happen? Well. We're gonna shift now to the right. We're gonna form more products in order to reestablish equilibrium. So notice again, forming more products, using up our reactants in order to establish those equilibrium concentrations. And then lastly, if K is equal to Q, the system is already at equilibrium. And although the reaction is still occurring in both the forward and reverse directions, the relative concentrations of products to reactants aren't gonna change. Boom, K is equal to Q, we're already at equilibrium, there's gonna be no shift in the reaction. One of my favorite chemistry cat memes, most of us are probably thinking this right now, when I say equilibrium constant, you think, okay? Boom, and we are done. Have a fantastic day.